I remember my grandfather saying that when he lost his son and, and daughter, he said it just ain't right. Parents ain't supposed to outlive the children. See what he meant meant back then. And uh just be praying for the Carter family. Amen. Also there's an uh George uh his name is George Proctor from uh, St. Luke. He's a deacon over there, he was ninety one. And I should run into him every so often at Walmart. And he used to say, Rev, keep doing what you're doing. And uh I've got to do a better job of keeping stuff. And so, saying that, I'm gonna I'm gonna let some stuff go. I didn't we didn't. Our son died. Till I opened the paper up and went. Throw it in there. Got to do a better. Job. Also, Sister Bacon, uh, Catherine, she lost her son last week. Amen. So uh, be lifting those families up in prayer. Pastor Scott preached about today. He says when things don't make any sense at all, make any sense. He was a truck driver, road driving trucks, getting his life started. Just never know, and he said sometimes, which is true. Sometimes you ain't got no words to say. Sometimes you don't know what to say. Just can't make no sense out of it. So uh, I'm not gonna say I I know what they're going. I haven't lost a child yet. Imagine that. It's uh, Benny Benny Junior had three children. Three Just be praying for the bereavement. Man, all got to go through it. All going to go through it. God's help, right? Doesn't make it any easier though. No, it don't. Right, biz. Well, tonight is uh not my night. To Teach Bible study. I didn't preach on Sunday. Amen. Mrs. Thomas gonna come and she's gonna teach us tonight. Amen. And all I ask you has an open heart and receiving mind. Amen. Come on, Mrs. Thomas. Amen. Amen. Also, uh, also, if you don't know, I, I heard that uh, Long County went virtual. They all virtual. I think it's about time for it. Nope. 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 We don't. Ma'am. This is true. Some schools don't. They're, they're not making them wear masks. It's optional. That might be part of the problem. I don't know. <laughs> mm. So, I don't know. Uh, but we're going to continue. But we're sad. We thank you, Lord. We honor you. We day that brought us through to point. Thank you for everyone who came out to Bible study. Thank you to those who have tuned in to Bible study. And yes, we do um, send our condolences and let those who are grieving know that we do care about them, love them, that we are here for them. Comforting them. And thank you, God, for the Bible study that it will come forth as you would have it to come, that we will become better and learn something. Just go out and be better disciples and witnesses. 
in the world that we live in today. In the name of Jesus. So good evening to everyone that I did not get to do. So I have been going through the parables for you know during the time that is mine. We looked at the parable of the sower. We looked at the parable of the wheat and tares. We learned um, when we were looking at the parable of the sower that only one soil was truly receptive to the word of God. When we looked at the parable of the wheat and tares, we um, found that, and, and we know that Satan is doing his best to undermine the efforts of the sower by planting tares, and the ultimate result is division. Um, anybody else want to add something to that? And I, I just was, when I looked at tares and, and studied that, it was just amazing to me to get a true understanding that a tear is not just any everyday ordinary weed. Um, it can ultimately bring about death to the person who eats it. And that's what the enemy wants, is death of us. Um, but we know that we have um, eternal life through the salvation of, of Jesus Christ. So tonight, we are going to look at the parable of the mustard seed, and that is in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 and 32. If someone would read that for us, please. You said Matthew 31 and 32? 13, 31, 32, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, has everybody in here seen a mustard seed? You have or have not? Okay, have not. Got some? Okay, excuse me. Okay, you, he's gonna get them. Um, it's amazing. Okay, yeah, okay, so you, mustard seed, yes. Yes, very, thank you, thank you, thank you. Very <laughs> tiny, it's tiny. And it's amazing that this little seed can grow into a tree that is 10 to 15 feet tall. Amazing, and so Jesus' words say that it becomes the greatest among the herbs. It becomes a tree, and the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. What does that mean? The birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. What does that mean? It's a home. They make a nest. It's a safe haven. A birthplace. Okay. Figuratively, well, yeah, literally, birds go to trees, but figuratively, everything that you said. And so we go and we rest in him. Amen. Amen. So um, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Book of Isaiah. 
chapter 11. We're going to read a couple of verses here. Isaiah chapter 11. 11 and 1. If somebody would read that for us, please. Thank you. Amen. Branch is uppercase, and we know that this branch is If this, if the word branch is uppercase, it's referring to, thank you, yes ma'am, thank you, yes ma'am. Um, and so let's flip over to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 verses 2 and 3. Amen. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor come. He's not beautiful. We don't desire him. He's despised. He's rejected. A man of sorrows, much grief, despised and not esteemed. And isn't this what Jesus went through? when he was on this earth, that is exactly what he went through. Let's turn to Dan, and we're talking about the parable of the mustard seed and how it grows from a tiny seed to a majestic tree. Daniel chapter two, verse 35. Daniel chapter 2, verse 35. Then the iron and clay of bronze, silver and gold, were pressed together, became like chaff, for the sun to thresh and blow. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone Ah, 
became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And down in verse 44, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. The kingdom of God is in existence, but the there the other kingdom shall be destroyed, shall be destroyed. So reading these verses according to Old Testament prophecy, the kingdom of heaven has a small beginning, but it's going to grow and become great and mighty and strong. All we have, well, I'm not going to say all we have to do, but looking at the prophecy of what the word of God says. And so here it says, it shall become a great mountain. So now let's go to the book of Acts. Book of Acts. Starting in chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 41 and 42. Thank you. They were baptized, and that same day added unto them about 3,000. Let's go over to Acts chapter 4. Acts 4 and 4. Talking about growth. Amen, amen, growing, continuing to grow. Acts 7, I mean, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 6, Acts 6 and 7. Thank you. The word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly. Again, growth. If we go to Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Thank you. In the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. If we go to Acts chapter 21, Acts 21 verse 20.
Thank you. Thousands believe and they are zealous. What does zealous mean? Excited, eager, they're on fire for the Lord. And not a lot of dialogue tonight. Questions, comments? <laughs> Bottom line, the prophecy says it's going to start small. And we know that when Jesus came onto the earth, they didn't know. They didn't know what was going on. And we read in the word of God that in his hometown, they didn't receive him. Who are you? You're... you're Aren't you the carpenter's son? Isn't your mother Mary? We know your sisters and your brothers, and what's going on here? Um, so understanding that growth does take place. And what can we take away from that simple fact as believers? And it might be different for everyone in this room. Yes, ma'am. But what I picked up was that also that um, personally, when you when you come to Christ, your day is small in our faith. Mm -hmm. And as we grow in Him, um, we're expected to produce fruit. In other words, go out and gather souls for Him. Right, exactly, exactly. And, and that is displayed in the word that we read as well. You know, you ha people have to be taught. It has to be presented. And through you as an individual, it's presented to other people. And so as an individual, if you're presenting it, whether you're speaking it to them um, witnessing to them through word or just your action, you're drawing someone and you're helping the increase. Absolutely. Anybody else? Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the mustard seed is small. It, it doesn't matter. It's, it, it, it doesn't matter where you begin. If you put, as an individual, if you're putting forth the work, then growth is going to come. And, and, and faith... Um, I believe, increases as we go through stuff. It has to increase because you say, well, Lord, I know you did it before, and if you did it then, I know you can do it now. Just, just continuing to grow in the Lord. Anybody else? Okay. So the growth of the church, this is what I have in my notes, is beneficial to the world. 
okay? Pastor says it all the time, despise not small beginnings. Here, we have a small body, but who knows what the Lord will do in his time. Despise not small beginnings. This is a mustard seed, but what, what happens to a mustard seed? It grows, it grows. And so we have to continue to, to teach, preach, and live the word of God and have that faith and know that God, I don't think that he gave us 32 acres down the road just for it to sit there. I don't believe that for one minute. We just have to continue to walk the walk, talk the talk, and do what we have been called to do on this day. And just know that, and, and just be ready. Just be ready. And so the birds, I, I, the birds of the air nesting in the branches, somebody said, you know, not the, I'm not looking at literal birds in the tree, but we are the birds that are resting in the branches of the Lord. Um, so now let's go to uh, Romans, Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Amen. Peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay, Matthew, Matthew 11. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Resting in the Lord. Resting in the Lord. We, I think, sometimes put too much on ourselves. We become burdened down by allowing things that are in our life and the lives of those that we love to weigh us down and burden us down. Um, I was talking to a coworker the other day, and, and we're all going through COVID. It's hard for everybody. However, personally, I don't think that people understand how difficult it is at the schoolhouse. <laughs> That's just my humble opinion. I don't think people understand how difficult that is. And I, up until a couple of days ago, was taking everything personally. Like, what's going on? And I know the facts. The facts are, we were virtual for about a year. And when we were virtual, people weren't coming. And so if you're not coming, you can't, what are you getting inside of your brain? Not much. And, and we say all the time, these kids are a good 12 to 18 months behind. We get that. It's one thing to say it, though, but it's another thing to accept it. And so as an educator, that's hard to accept. I can say it all day long, but to actually accept that and be happy with that is a totally different thing. And so we have to come to the realization 
that as hard as it is, sometimes you have to let some stuff go. We didn't create some of the, we, yeah, we create situations for ourselves in our lives that bring destruction in our lives, but sometimes things happen that are out of our control. And we just have to say, okay, God, I just thank you for the peace as I go through. So whatever the situation is in your life that might be burdening you down, he says, it's okay. Rest in me. That is what I'm here for. Resting in the Lord. And something, um, I don't know if it was the last time or the time before when we were talking about parables and it came up that he spoke in parables because it made sense to them at that time because of where they were, and the culture. So I thought of this question. If you were in that time, in that culture, and you heard Jesus say this parable, how would you respond? How would you respond? Here, this one, the mustard seed. Or pick one. Let's differentiate. Pick one. You can do the so we, the three that we've talked about, okay? The sower, uh, the wheat and the tares, or mustard seed. How, how would you have responded? Not today, but if you were physically there, hearing those words from Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And and that's okay. Yeah. I I don't even know why I thought of that question. It is I don't know, Minister Will. Well I saw your brain working. Mm-hmm. Before that, it was just spreading the word to those who could hear. You know what I mean? Those who have an ear, they would hear what he was saying through the parables. And it wasn't for Satan people to hear him claim, make certain claims, but him, him to spread the truth. Mm-hmm. And if you were listening to the gospel, if those who do ministry, if you guys go out there and witness to people, you can tell those who don't want to see the obvious. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, it says over in the Old Testament. <laughs> He's really trying to get you guys, come on over here. You know, I, I, I say things like, uh, you know, we're under a death sentence. Well, he can just say that, like, I'm going to kill you all, right? Oh, he just says the wages of sin is death, but he's just really trying to coax his children to come back to the way and do it the right way. Mm-hmm. So I see it as kind of a, um, like 
we're trying to to really, you know, you really try to put it to them in a way that they can understand it. And also, those who will not hear, right, those who are the children of the devil, who ain't going to hear it, mm-hmm. because they're not his children. The king's children will hear this and hear what's going on, mm-hmm. and they will go towards the father, the master, right? Everybody else will be confused, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then at that time, when it was time for his revealing, then, you know, the crucifixion happened because then he started saying things correct. You know what I mean? You know, um, you know, he had, he had kind of a, a little bit of a flair. You know what I mean? You remember what he said? Uh, give the Caesars what Caesars. And, you know, they were trying to trap him. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, so, I hope that makes sense for you. Mm-hmm. Did I say anything that makes sense? I know I just ran out of <laughs> <laughs> Sir? Okay. Okay, so anybody else want to answer or, or ask? <laughs> Shake your <or> say no. <laughs> Tough question. Tough question. So, yeah, we understand. He did. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. 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 And I'm the prophecy of Mary or a virgin bringing forth this newborn child. If they, some people were understanding where it was going, and some were not. And just, yeah, it it is hard to answer that question because we, we have the word. We have the text. They didn't. They didn't. It that yeah, that is a hard ma'am. Amen. Amen. And that is exactly what we talked about with the parable of the sower um, when at the very beginning when I said only one soil was truly receptive to the word of God. There, you know, it's it's falling on stony ground. My heart is hard. I don't want to hear this. Okay, for a moment, I hear it, I receive it, but times get tough, and I'm going to jump ship. Right. 
Exactly, which, which is so true. And so we continue to witness. We continue to speak life into other people. We continue to say what thus saith the Lord through his word. Because, yeah, some people it's immediate and some people it's not. But the bottom line is the wheat and the, 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 the uh, seed is going to fall on the ground. S some of that seed is going to grow and produce and be beautiful. Um, some of it is not. Um, the parable of the wheat and the tares, we understand that they have to grow up together, but he will do the separating in the end. That is not our job, but you're absolutely right. The Bible tells us there's nothing new under the sun, so exactly what was going on then or what's going on now was going on then. Same thing. Same thing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. He he says, I don't want anybody to perish. I don't want anyone to perish. Absolutely. 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 So spiritually, we have the same seed of the kingdom, and that is the word of God. We as believers, we have the word of God. We have it. They didn't have the text, but we have it, and we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. If somebody would go to 1 Peter, First Peter chapter one verses twenty three through twenty five. And when born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Yes, sir, twenty three. Sorry, Mark, please. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Seed uncorruptible lives and abides forever. And let's go back to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. Uh, 10 and 10, 10 and 11, 10 and 11. You're fine. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. No, you're fine. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. A seed, uncorruptible, lives and abides forever. A seed capable of producing what God intends for it to produce. Exactly like someone just said. What, what, what God has shall come forth. The big picture may not be overly clear, but what God has to come forth shall come forth. And the bottom line, which has already been stated, the first two parables do remind us that not all will accept the word of God. This parable declares that the kingdom will grow. It will grow. It will grow. Because that is what the word of God says. And so the big picture of the, the kingdom of God growing and our little individual lives and what we produce in our lives, if we just continue to go forth and do what thus saith the Lord, then we shall be fruitful and productive as well. And I think this is the first time that I've ever finished before 8 o'clock. <laughs> but there's a first time for everything. Um, excuse me. Questions or comments? Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? No? Amen. All right, then. Praise the Lord continuing to, to study the word and, and learn more. And you know what? It's just amazing. Your, your, your comments just remind me. I mean, we do know, but it, it's just a reminder that there is so much we don't know. There is so much we don't know. You can, hey, that's all I, I'm just going to end it on that. There is so much we do not know. Don't know. So, amen. Anything? Okay. All right. Um, Deacon Franklin, would you mind praying us out this evening, please? Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 Amen.